If you're Christian and are pro-choice, this is something I pray that you meditate on. If you're Christian, that means you are a follower of Christ, our Savior, who was born on the 25th. Every year, we, we celebrate his birthday. And if you're Catholic, you celebrate Christmas Tide, which is the season of Christmas, which is even more amazing than just the Christmas day. Regardless, this was the day that our, our Savior was born into the world. And so I want to I want to emphasize the fact that this was the day that he was born. I want to start from the moment the angel Gabriel came to Mary to announce that she was going to be the mother of Christ. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. It was at this moment that God became human at the Annunciation. This was the moment that Mary became a mother. This was the moment that God became flesh, just like you and me. He became man. He became part of the human race. Regardless of the translation that you prefer, the King James or the RSCB, uh, Hail full of grace, hail thou art highly favored, although it is hail full of grace, which is more precise. The most important part of this message was the Lord is with thee and also Mary's acceptance of the Lord, of becoming his mother. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Think about that. People always say, like, why Hail Mary? Why Hail Mary? Well, it's at this moment that God came. Yes, he wasn't born yet, but he was here with us in the flesh. It was the beginning of his life. This is why as Christians and especially Catholics, we should rejoice at the Hail Mary. Just like hail, hail full of grace, meaning rejoice. Mother Mary, rejoice for you are with God. God is with you. He is in you, should you accept. So when we pray the Hail Mary, and especially when we're praying the beginning, the, the joyful mysteries, um, the Annunciation, this is what we need to meditate on. It's about our Lord becoming human, becoming the Word incarnate, Logos, came into the world. This is when the good news arrived. Mary didn't become a mother when she gave birth. Mary became a mother when she accepted, when she received, when she conceived. Mary, like you and me, was born with free will. And she could have said no, but thank God she said yes. She said yes to being the mother of Jesus. Just quickly, when she was visiting her cousin Elizabeth, so it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. John leapt in her womb. And at that time, she wasn't showing any signs of pregnancy. She wasn't visibly pregnant yet, but John left in the womb and Elizabeth knew. The Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth with this knowledge. I became a mother when my first child was conceived. I might not have known for the first four weeks until I started, you know, getting the signs, um, feeling a little under the weather, but I became a mother at the instant. And then from the moment I knew I was pregnant, I knew I was a mom and my husband was a dad. My children were fully human in the womb. They were fully human in the in the womb, just as they are fully human out of the womb. And to reflect on Mary's life, the world tells us about all these horrible things that can happen when you're a mother. You lose time for yourself. You lose your career, your body, etc., etc. And you just you'll never be the same. You're right. You will never be the same. You will be far greater. And so much stronger. What you gain in return for the sacrifice that you give to your children is so much more than what you could ever imagine. The fruits 
of the sacrifice of a mother and a father far outnumber those those sacrifices that we could have made just for ourselves. Can you imagine if Mary had said no or if she had changed her mind in the middle of her pregnancy when it was starting to become difficult? So like, think about it, right? Mary, she was probably around 12 or 14 because that's when, um, that's when Jewish girls uh, would be betrothed to get married about that time. So she was about 12 to 14 years old. She lived in a little town uh, called Nazareth. Probably everybody knew her and she knew everybody and she was supposed to be a virgin. Sooner or later, I mean, it's gonna start to show. So can you imagine Our Lady Mary just at such a vulnerable age, you know, the angel Gabriel comes to her and she accepts, but she is human after all. And I'm sure she thought about all all of that, all of the struggles that was gonna come, that were gonna come to her, and the difficult things that she was gonna go through for Jesus. And that's hard. Yeah, you might say, well, you know, she's married, she knows that it's Jesus, so she was probably comforted. Yes, but she was human, just like you and me, and so was Jesus. You know, when Jesus agonized in the garden, those were true human emotions and human pain that he felt even though he was God. I'm not saying Mary is God. Mary was 100% human, but getting this good news, but also thinking about the repercussions was probably really hard for her to go through you know yes rejoice the war the lord is with you hail the lord is with you you are going to be the mother of the word incarnate uh, i'm sure she had mixed feelings you know i'm not saying that she doubted god at all i'm just saying she was human and she probably felt fear as much as she trusted in God, there was, I'm sure there was some sort of fear of what was to come. But she put her faith and she put her trust in God, which was, which, which helped her in the end. By today's standards, her profile would have been deemed okay if she had an abortion. Word got out that she was pregnant, shame, the shame, you know, she was supposed to be a virgin, which she was and remained a virgin. And even until now, you know, how people were probably thinking, how is she going to take care of the baby? That's not, that's probably not even Joseph. Yeah, think of, think of the gossip and probably the, the way people treated her. It's probably awful. This, this was the burden that came with this good news. But what did she say? I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done according to thy word. Thy will be done, she said, O Lord, thy will be done. Saying yes to the Lord can be scary, but saying yes to the Lord can, can bring about great good and in Mary's case, brought about the good for the whole world. The, wor the word incarnate came thanks to Mary saying yes. God came down. And so I, want, I would like you, if you are pro-choice, if you're a Christian and pro-choice, think about that. In the end, you cannot be pro-choice and Christian because then you would, you would deny the fact that God was here at that moment that Mary became pregnant. You can't be pro-choice and Christian cannot be pro-choice and Catholic. Being pro-choice would mean to deny the humanity of God when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and spoke those words to Mary that changed the course of humanity. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. One moment, there's a really, I, I bring this book up all the time, but it's amazing. Eternal Woman by Gertrude von Lefort, German. She's a wonderful writer. I've talked about her many, many times, but I think this is the very end. This is from the very, very end of the book. The Annunciation made to Mary is fundamentally an Annunciation to the whole human race. The Annunciation to Mary is a message to every creature, but to the creature as represented in Mary. The renewal of the eternal image 
through the Marian mission of the woman completes itself in the vicarious role of her who represents the creature. Mary stands for her daughters, but her daughters must also stand for her. But again, as always, the Annunciation to Mary precedes the fulfillment through Christ. Vision follows upon concealment, as redemption does upon the humility of acquiescence, as the unfolding of heaven upon its willing acceptance, upon the yes of the creature. Yes. So, for all you Christians, Catholics especially, when you hear, when you read Hail Mary, you should rejoice. And it is the same whenever you hear someone who gets pregnant is with child, rejoice. This is the good work of God, and God is working in you. And the sacrifice that you are going to give is going to be for a greater good. And he will bless you abundantly. My name is Alexis. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. God bless.